Welcome to the Startup Story Podcast, where we interview entrepreneurs about their company. We want to give our listeners answers about the questions, how do I create my own startup? How do product ideas emerge? What tips can a CEO give you about his business? We tell you all about it. Today we are talking to Carl, CEO of Rumble Studio. Join us on our talk. Bot Talk Podcast. Uh, so Rumble Studio is a SaaS to help uh, companies, uh, agencies, and creators like podcasts, uh, po- podcasters, excuse me, uh, to uh, record and publish podcasts 10 times faster and easier. Um, and so we have a, a unique system, uh, which is called uh, asynchronous podcasting. So it's not uh, a live interview like we're doing right now, uh, but it's a bit more like type form where you add uh, your questions into an online platform. They could be in text or in audio and you build out an uh, an interview so to speak you send the guests uh, a link you can even uh, put that link on twitter to get hundreds of people to take part Uh, you get lots of audio in return and then you can put that together in rumble studio in our in our mix feature add jingles follow-up comments etc merge it uh, and then publish one or more episodes onto apple Podcasts, spotify etc and in that way you can create many episodes in a batch and you know, publish a lot more content than you would usually be able to, uh, doing it one on you know one one episode at a time. How did you come up with the idea? What is your background? You know how or why podcasting? I have the uh, well, I had a podcast called uh, the Voice Tech Podcast. I launched that um, around 2018 when I was doing a data science masters. So I was working in the lab, uh, working on machine learning models with voice data actually on voice emotion transformation, which is quite cool. Um, but I launched the podcast at the same time to to boost my profile. Um, and uh, it was fantastic for for that purpose. You know, it really elevated my brand. Got to speak to fantastic startups uh, such as such as yours. Um, but uh, it was a huge amount of work. I was spending my entire weekend, you know, on on each episode. It was taking at least ten hours worth of effort for each one. Uh, so I had no social life. You know, I was just working all week and then working on the podcast all weekend. And because I was talking about voice technology speech to text, natural language understanding, synthetic voices, voice cloning, all of these cool technologies that are just getting better and better by the day. The thought obviously occurred to me that I could bring the two worlds together and use some of these speech technologies to make audio content creation uh, a lot easier for me and for potentially you know other creators and businesses out there. And that's, so that's really where the, the idea came from. It's developed a lot since then. Uh, I joined an incubator uh, entrepreneur first met my co-founder Jerry Scary, and together we've we've developed the solution to into what it is today. Where are you now, roughly, in your like uh, startup uh, uh, startup life, uh, and mm. you know when did you begin? My journey in voice really began when I was actually living in Beijing when I, I worked at a startup called Gather Health, and we had a, a you know we were making an app to help uh, diabetics talk to uh, health coaches and, and doctors, uh, and, and it was a text only kind of chat interface, and it was through that experience. That you know, first you know, it first became apparent to me that you know a, a conversational interaction is much more impactful on a person's behavior. So I thought this is this is the kind of direction I want to go. If you're going to create, if you want to create an experience that actually changes the way people act and improves their lives as a result, conversation is a great way to do that. So I would say it started then. Uh, like I said, the idea for Rumble Studio first occurred to me while I was doing my podcast because I thought we could actually make you know useful, interesting, uh, influential. Uh, conversations or in a in an automated fashion okay so and uh, uh, how many people are in the startup right now so we are uh, 10 we're a team of 10 right now with some additional freelancers and some advisors on uh, as well um all based in france uh, the growth team uh, sales and marketing is, is in paris my co-founder lives uh, up north in lille and we have uh, you know a number of developers down south with the the good weather in the south of france lucky them um so uh yeah but we've got the you got the wind and the rain up here in Paris. <laughs> okay, great, makes sense. Uh, yeah, very interesting. How is uh, how is the startup uh, scene in France? Yeah, well, so startup scene in France is amazing. Like it, that was one of the most surprising things to me actually, because I think before I came, France had a bit of a reputation for being kind of slow and difficult to set up a business, and but it's it's not at all actually. I mean, there is bureaucracy for sure. Um, I can't compare it really directly to the UK startup scene because I left the UK in two thousand nine. So um, we did. From Beijing, set up a company in the UK. It was very, it's very quick and easy to set up a mm-hmm. company. But I've never actually run run a company in the UK or been part of the scene. Uh, but from what I hear from other people in the, you know, uh, in the scene, that it's it's great. Obviously, there's a lot of investment, a lot of innovation coming out of the UK. Um, I can compare it more to to Beijing, where I, you know, I did uh, try and start a startup, 
where again like on the chinese side of it it's incredibly competitive huge amount of investment and a, and a lot going on and a lot of innovation coming out of china so again china's got a reputation for being a bit of a copycat but there's a huge amount that china does that we haven't even started doing in the in europe yet so amazing place to start a startup if you're chinese i would say much harder if you're from europe because you need to have a Chinese partner, you need to you need to speak to Chi Chinese, you know, you need to be, have a good level of Chinese, which I, I didn't. I, mine was, you know, mediocre at best. Um, and the the whole of China is set up to protect and further Chinese interests, not Western interests. So compared to the compared to my experience in China, where there was very little support from from for my startup, when I came to France and did a you know new startup, there was just loads of government support. There's programs all over the place that give you grants, that give you loans coaching acceleration you're much closer to all the other european countries so you know entrepreneur first is originally a uk incubator so you know straight in there uk management uh, it was just night and day for me and uh coming to europe would just completely transform my my startup experience where are you uh you know in terms of the business uh, you know how big mm -hmm. is the, you know the amount of revenue who are your customers uh, can you elaborate on that who are our customers um originally and uh, you know, we were aiming Rumble Studio at businesses. I've always thought this is a B2B product that I, I still feel that the biggest opportunity for podcasting and audio creation is is in the, the business side of things. Um, and, you know, th the reason is because podcasting is very slow and costly. It's very time consuming and businesses just can't dedicate a, a large chunk of their marketing budget to just doing a podcast, which may not pay off in the short term, right? It's a long term proposition of podcast. Um, so we started selling to businesses. Uh, there was huge interest, but what we found was that the businesses also need someone to be there at the beginning to help them with the strategy. They need consulting, planning. Uh, they need someone to edit the audio after they've produced it. They need someone to help them promote it. So they basically need an agency to accompany them from beginning to end, which is fine. You know, that is, the, you know, an agency can provide all of those steps. But as a SaaS company, you know, we're not looking to become an agency and provide all these services. We tried, you know, we 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 play, we we work with a couple of startups doing that, but it's not really our, our model or our core strength. Um, and so we uh, went the other direction um, and actually had this amazing uh, launch on AppSumo, the early stage uh, SaaS marketplace, which I can tell you about. But their audience is much more the creators, the podcasters, small businesses, solopreneurs, small agencies, you know, very used to doing things with their hands. Like they, they a lot of them already create audio or they mm -hmm. already create digital marketing and they they know how to do things, you know, like just get things done yeah. with, the, with their bare hands. Uh, and we, we've had an amazing, amazing response from that kind of community. Um, we launched at... Uh, the beginning of August or the last week of July, it was ran, ran a campaign on on AppSumo for about eight weeks. Uh, and AppSumo, if you don't know, is a is a marketplace that offer lifetime deals at a huge discount. So the customers pay once, uh, and they get lifetime access to your products. So you tend to do it. Startups tend to do it at the beginning of their life. You know, when they're just looking for their first few customers, uh, and it worked amazingly well for us. We got um, over three hundred fifty thousand um, gross sales in eight weeks. Uh, we got more than seven, 1,700, 1,700 uh, new customers. They've invited guests onto their show. So in total, we've got about 6,000 users now uh, mm -hmm. on the platform. Um, together, they've recorded more than 15 days worth of, of audio on Rumble Studio, oh, okay. which I'm pretty happy with, um, and, uh, and, um, and provided us a huge amount of feedback as well. We set up a feedback yeah. forum on, on Canny. We've got Discord. And they're just in there talking every day about what they need to improve, you know, what they like to see in the product. So you got AppSumo uh, customers and those are like, you know, as you said, like maybe a smaller studios and so on and so forth. But you mm -hmm. must have like, you know, the majority of your revenue. Is it coming from this uh, smaller customers or are you aiming at bigger kind of uh, companies that do stuff? So? So we're starting with the the smaller customers because those are the creators. They're the ones who are willing to to use a product that's not completely finished. And, you know, we're a pre-seed company. And we're still adding features all the time. We've got a lot of the roadmap still to build, still improving the UX. We haven't even added uh, transactional emails to like let people know when guests record yet. That's coming uh, in the next month or two. All of these things, these building blocks that are build the, the full product are coming. Um, so... It's all about creators, early adopters, visionaries at the beginning. But for sure, you know, that's not, uh, you know, really the most lucrative market that we could target. It's the the businesses, the the agencies, uh, yeah. the, the big multinationals, et cetera. So we are working with some of those. We have a, a deal with one um, multinational company um, to sell uh, Rumble Studio through with, with their agencies. But dealing with these companies, I find, is it's very slow. Uh, it doesn't give you the feedback or the... Um, you know, all the traction that you need in order to be able to raise or in order to be able to develop your product. So right now, 
most of our attention also is on the the creator side of things yeah. in order to just build the product out and make sure it's useful uh, to create interesting audio because we're, we're we're developing a new a new way to make podcasts here and there is some skepticism as well. You know, what is yeah. a podcast? P- people typically think it's what we're doing right now, having a two way chat. Mm-hmm. Um, and in order to to show people, actually, there are a lot of different formats you can create asynchronously. Mm-hmm. Plus, it has all of these benefits with asynchronous. You know, it's it's more time efficient. It's more scalable. Often, you get better quality answers from your guests. That you know, I've got a, a huge list, and we've got blog posts written all about this. But people will have to hear it to believe it. You know, so we we need to work with creators to get some of that out. We make some internally, but people will find it even more credible if they they see other people doing it. And I get this ask in uh, investor meetings all the time. You know, what famous podcasters are using your tool right now? And it's like, well. You know, you got to walk before you you can run. We've got podcasters, and they're famous in their domains, but they're not Joe Rogan, right? Like they're not people you maybe yeah. you've heard of, or Mathieu Stefani in in France. Um, so it's all about the credibility, you know. Like people just need to see those kind of, uh, um, yeah, those proof points. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, that is something that Botox is also fighting with. Uh, there are different kinds of uh, or different genres of uh, podcasts, actually. Mm. Uh, if you if you think about it, like. Uh, because Botalk uh, provides these uh, synthetic voices, uh, uh, we produce the podcast on the fly, right? Mm-hmm. And when we talk about it, then you know the the majority of people who do do not uh, know anything about news publishing say, "Well, that's not podcast. That's just you mm-hmm. know some news being read out loud." But mm-hmm. we know for our pub- for our customers, this is exactly what the podcast is. They yeah. take their they take their news uh, news uh, uh, and they read it out loud, right? And uh, the same, you mentioned Joe Rogan. Okay, this is a conversational podcast, completely different, I think, uh, even dynamic in the studio, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and you are doing something like in between, right? So this is kind of a transactional uh, kind of stuff for the podcast that I think very much uh, formal in their structure. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm like, you know, take me, for example. I'm I'm uh, asking the same questions all over again for, for mm-hmm. each one. So I guess those kind of like you know structured structured podcasts are the best ones that uh, you guys are um, you know made for, right? Yeah, I was going to say yeah. So with the product in its current incarnation, I think you're absolutely right. You know, it's asynchronous, so it's question answer, question answer. After you've got the question answers, you can go in and record follow up comments. So mm-hmm. you can produce a pretty realistic flow question answer follow up comment question answer follow up comment. Uh, but we're adding features all the time to make it more and more personalized for each guest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the things we're doing is building this conversational AI layer that can actually listen to and understand what the guest said and then in real time generate a follow-up question. So the guest is actually getting questions that mm-hmm. the, the creator didn't plan up front. Wow. This, is, you know, this is the thing. we got two PhDs working on it, right? This is the, mm-hmm. the, the long-term vision for Rumble. In between those two extremes of just you know, question, answer, question, answer, and, you know, fully dynamic conversation. There are a lot of things you can put in, in between. You can personalize the questions for the guests based on their previous answers, for example, Mm -hmm. and you can give the illusion of some kind of personalization. But what you just said is is surprisingly common in the podcasting industry. You you listen to the majority of podcasts, especially new podcasters. They just ask the question. They let let the guest talk for a couple of minutes. They agree with what the guest said. They're like, yeah, very interesting. I totally agree. Next question. (laughs) And you're like, okay. (laughs) What I find fascinating about Rumble Studio is this kind of uh, uh, appeal, and I don't know if you, it seems that that uh, you you are going in this direction, right? Appeal of, you know, you are going to make me a better podcaster yeah. with, your, uh, with your question suggestions, right? Absolutely. The, the vision for Rumble is to help someone who's never done a podcast mm-hmm. and has never created audio content to be able to do so uh, easily, consistently, and at a high quality. And so this question uh, recommendation engine that I'm talking about that will generate new questions in real time based on what the guest said will also be used at planning time for the creator. So when they when they start typing their first questions, you know, maybe it's around startup financing, they'll yeah. say, well, here's some really interesting questions we've got from Google search or from Twitter or from other people who've made podcasts on the platform. Why don't you, you know, try asking some of these? And they're like, oh, yeah, these actually, this is a good direction to go. Mm. I wouldn't have thought of that. I'm not a domain expert. Because often, yeah. I mean, you must find, you know, you're speaking to people in different domains. You can't be an expert on everything. So you need a bit of a help. And that research phase alone takes takes time, doesn't it, to get yeah, your head yeah. in gear. And you're doing a lot of research, a lot of kind of mental prep for that one guest, just yeah. for that one conversation. And then off, and then you'll be on to the next guest. So it's a huge yeah. amount of investment in one person. And in a live conversation, if that guest doesn't then turn up, you've wasted yeah. a lot of your time 
and you're like, wow, you know, I've really invested two or three hours of my time in this person. They didn't even show up to the live interview. Definitely. I think the best interviewers in the world, they have like a huge team that is prepared yeah. and is researching and is uh, uh, like, you know, investing so much time. And it is uh, misleading, I think, for most of us uh, to to think, okay, yeah, the podcasting is so easy, just, you know, microphone, ask good questions. It's not about the tech. It's, you know, what kind of questions are you asking? Because we're going after creators, it's it's actually more of a B2C model for the, the creator side, even if they're creators that are making money out of the podcast or small agencies. The way we reach them is through a lot of content marketing. So blogs, videos, social yeah. media, podcast, of course. Um, and uh, we're actually setting up an ambassador program so that we're um, uh, alongside an affiliate scheme. So we're, we're actually seeking out podcasters and bloggers um, who are who have audiences mm -hmm. of our type of potential customers uh, and then uh, giving them the product, let, allowing them to use it. Uh, and then and then uh, if they recommend the product to their audience, they can earn a commission based on the affiliate. So that's going to be uh, ready by the uh, sometime in January, I think, the affiliate program. Yeah. Um, we've already had some some press being written about us from from small bloggers, and uh, and we're going to ramp that up as well. When you go to agencies and, and companies, they need, just need a package. They just need a how-to mm -hmm. guide, a product that works end to end, and it solves a problem there and that. And yeah. and right now, I, I still feel we've got a, a few things to add before we get to that point. I made the mistake in my a previous startup of not doing it. It's just two guys in a room just solving mm -hmm. a problem for a, a, an audience that we didn't really understand very well, and it doesn't, it you know, didn't end well as you can imagine. Uh, this time, very keen to to get the users involved as soon mm -hmm. as possible. But it's thanks to the launch on AppSumo that we got so many um, mm -hmm. and so and so many engaged users as well, people willing to tell us their opinion, to vote up the features in our forum. Like this stuff, like you say, it's the most valuable. And and I think it's the thing that a lot of investors don't realize. You know, they're always looking at the metrics. How much have you sold? What's your growth? Yeah. How much did you make from, you know, their only lifetime customers? Why not monthly recurring? And it's like, well, actually, these first customers, they're, they're worth way more than just yeah, the, the money they're giving you because they're helping shape this, this product into something that's useful for the next 10,000, 100,000 users, you know. Carl, thank you so much. So, mu so many insights. So um, where can people reach uh, um, and maybe try out uh, Rumble Studio? Yeah, so just go to rumble.studio. You'll find everything there. We've got podcasts, newsletters, loads of blogs. We're putting out a blog every week now. Uh, we've got webinars, um, workshops, yeah. everything. There's a, there's a workshop there to help you plan and set up your first podcast in a general sense, you know, asking all the questions that you need to ask before you record your first episode. So that applies equally if you're going to use Rumble Studio or Bot Talk or, or, or any other tool to, uh, to, to make your podcast. 